Hey guys, it's Michelle and Marcella here coming to you from iHelpMoms.com where we are on a mission with our family experts to make motherhood easier, healthier, and happier. Today's episode is something I think all parents universally want to know, and that is how do we communicate with our families better? Communication is probably one of the most stressful things in any household, including in mine, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. And so I'm coming to our expert family therapist today to ask you, are there different types of communication needs throughout our families? Absolutely. And let me tell you guys something. This is something I have to work on every day as well. This is a skill that we should all be working on every day of our lives. Awesome. So the first thing you want to get clear on is what is not communication. (laughs) Let's start with that. So communication is not expressing every single thought that comes into my mind. That is just called not having a filter. (laughs) So communication, I want you to start to see it like this invisible construction, either a bridge or a barrier. Hmm. So we are either communicating with the intention to bring somebody closer to us or to set up a barrier and create some distance. Interesting. It's not good or bad. It's just, I want you to get clear on your intention. What is your intention when you communicate with somebody? So are you trying to bring them in or are you pushing them away a little bit? Interesting. So why is this important? Because when I have clarity of my intention, then I'm going to choose words that are in alignment with that. And so let's say I want to communicate to my child how happy I am with them, right? That's a bridge. I'm bringing them closer to me by expressing, I love this about you. Let's say they did something that hurt my feelings. Right there, I need to create a bridge and say, no, this is not okay. I'm not okay with that. Mm. So that's why I say it's not a good or a bad thing. It's just based on what you need. Awesome. This is so helpful to really understand the construction and how we're building and what that we want that to look like. So mm. another super important question that I think a lot of people need to work on, but maybe we don't always recognize that we need to work on it, but it's probably one of the hugest keys to communicating with a spouse, a partner, and our children, and just people in general, is how can we be better listeners? Mm. Okay, so really important. When we are talking, or when somebody is talking to us, people are in the habit of already thinking about what they're gonna say. Yeah. They are not actually listening. And one of the keys to being a great listener is just holding the space. Mm. So when somebody is going through something difficult, a lot of times we say, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say to this person. And you'll sometimes even avoid calling the person because you don't know what to say. But it's not about you. It's not about you. Being a good listener is just holding the space, Hmm. is being there. The presence, it's your presence that is the gift to the other person. Can you give me an example of holding that space with a child? Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's something, for instance, I'm thinking of my own child this morning, refusing to go to camp. I need to get her on that bus because she does not want to swim because they're asking her to go further and further and further, and she's scared. And so I'm juggling the two kids. She's crying on the couch. I'm like, I have got to go. How do we hold that space? So... That, that happened to me yesterday. <laughs> so it's a really good thing that you had alone. this experience because that happened yesterday. <laughs> so my little one wakes me up crying. He's like, I'm not going to camp. I'm just letting you know. And you're like, oh boy, <laughs> here we today. go. <laughs> and so my morning started. So it, so in my brain, I'm like, okay, settle in. I'm like, okay, let's, let's listen. So the first thing is listen, like just hear them out. So Instead of going into, honey, don't feel that way, because that's such, like, parents are uncomfortable, we all are uncomfortable with negative emotion. We have to get comfortable with negative emotion, guys. Like, that's key. We have to get comfortable with the range of emotions. Yeah. So the first thing is not react in, not react in a way where we're just trying to shut it down, right? Mm. Not saying, don't feel that way, You're be, you'll be fine. Because their experience, they're actually ch- telling you, I'm having an experience of fear. Yeah. So you have to look past what 
they're talking about. It's almost yeah. like it's not about the. It's never about the thing. It's never about the thing. It's really about what's going on inside. Yeah. So, the first thing is holding the space. Looks like this, honey. What's going on? Yeah. So then you let them talk. You let them share. You let them express what's going on. And then you take it in, right? Mm-hmm. Then, then, then from there. So, what did I do with my son? I didn't say, "Oh, honey, you're gonna be fine. Right. You're, it, it, you're just worried for nothing." No, because he was afraid. He yeah. had an experience where he was afraid. It doesn't serve him for me to tell him, "Don't feel what you're feeling." Right. So I listened to him and I acknowledged his feelings first. So that is one of the first steps. To being a good listener is acknowledging that you heard them. Yeah. So I said to him, "Lovey, I'm so sorry that happened. I'm so sorry you were afraid." That's the first thing. Then from there, I said to him, "But here's the thing. Let me explain to you why you're in swimming classes." Yeah. So I didn't go into, "Well, you have to go. I can't be late to work," right. or I can't. You know, like I didn't go into that. Yep. I just explained to him why he was in classes, and I said, "Listen, your father and I have planned an amazing summer for you. We have so many things going on, and they all involve swimming. Yeah. So you are in classes because we need you to be a good swimmer, so we can enjoy all these things. Yep. So not going to class is not an option." However, together, you and I are going to go and talk to your instructors、yep. and say that you had an experience where you were afraid, and if they can help out. And obviously, the, your kids are going to go like, "No,", no! yeah, because it's all or nothing.、Yep. Their brain goes from all to nothing in a second,、yep. right? So remember, the goal of childhood, the goal of early childhood, is emotional regulation. Yeah. So they're learning how to deal with this palette of emotions. Yeah. So. He's saying no, no. There's no fixing this. I, it's either I stay home or I have to go and be tortured, right? And I said no. There's a middle ground. We're gonna go and we're gonna talk and 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 we're gonna explain what happened to see how they can help us so that、right. you enjoy your class today. Yeah, I love that. And you know, Marcella is obviously a therapist and a counselor and a professor for almost twenty years now. So. To many people, it may seem like, oh, she knows it. But I can also tell you, having the gift of her in my life and learning and experiencing from my own family, sometimes this takes practice. So I want to be honest. I've literally written little notes on my mirror just to remind myself, like, don't try to fix it. Hold the space and wait to reply because I needed to really work on that. Because with three kids, a lot of times I'm like, I gotta keep going, you know. Like I want to hold the space, but we gotta keep going. Just being honest. So you know, I think those little reminders at times can help, and it's like a muscle. The more you practice it, the better communication your family will have, and I think you'll be really happy. Which leads me to the third point: How can we create an environment in our entire house, whether it's for our spouse, our partner, even friendships?、Mm. I think this is so important, like you said. Um, and for our kids as parents, how do we create an environment in our life that enables good communication?、Mm, I love that. One of the first easiest things you can do is always sending the message to your loved ones that you're happy they come to you.、Mm. So, no matter what it is they have to say, no matter how shocking, no matter how upsetting. No matter how obnoxious, right? So, like they said, like、oh, I'm having a bad day. This happened, or today's the worst day of my life, or whatever it is that's going、yeah. on. I want you to send the message by, and it could be as simple ways of saying something like, "You know what, lovey?" And this is exactly what I said. I said, "I'm sorry that happened, but I'm glad you're telling me." It's really good. I'm I'm sorry you had that experience, but it makes me happy I know that you you can come to me always. So. Sending the one of those phrases to your loved ones is a key message to let them know they can always come to you. I love this, and I think this is another important indicator, whether it's in relationships in general. Is I bet a lot of people will hear that and say, "Well, I don't get treated that way.、Mm. The people that I love don't say that to me." But I promise you, if you practice this in your own life, expecting nothing in return. They will start to understand that's something that you value, and I bet you will start to hear that same pattern、mm-hmm. come back to you, where you feel open and heard. 
So I just want to implore you that, you know, make sure that you're open to making that mm-hmm. shift before expecting it from other people. And I think you'll see that beautiful cycle mm-hmm. start to happen mm-hmm. of positive communication. I love that. And, and you have to imagine yourself as the visionary of your family. And so when you are the visionary, you are not expecting everybody else to be on board. You are the one that has the vision of what you want your family to look like. So I love that you bring that up. I love that you share your experience because you're right. That is exactly what a lot of people are going to say they feel, but it doesn't matter. You still have to go forward. So that's the first thing, making yourself, making yourself available to them. And then the second thing, what I shared earlier with, with my son's example is not dismissing their feelings. So not telling somebody you shouldn't feel that way. Mm. How many times, and, and it's something, it's a knee jerk reaction. You have to catch, actually physically catch yourself because sometimes your child could say something to you like, you know, shocking. Like I've had clients where, you know, their kids have said things like, I don't want to be alive. Yeah. And, 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 It takes everything in your body to stop yourself from saying, don't say that. Yeah. Right? So instead of saying, don't say that, right? Mm -hmm. Or you shouldn't feel that way. I want you to say, honey, why are you saying that? Mm. So remember, get curious. And just listen. Get curious and and just listen. So to close out this segment on how to help your family have incredible communication. We have the golden ticket, the treasure of all treasures. And that piece of advice is so simple, but so important. Tell us what that is. It's sending the message to our kids that it doesn't matter what the problem is, whether it's they had an issue with their friend or it's something at school or they don't want to go swimming at camp. It's sending the message together. We will figure this out Mm. together. We can figure out anything. And so we're practicing with every little thing that comes up. We are laying this foundation that will take them into adolescence and adulthood. That is, we are in this together. Yeah. I don't think there's anything better that we can ever let our kids know that we are there for them and we're in it together. I love that. All right, guys. Well, we are all about helping you build positive parenting foundations for a healthy, happy home. If you like what you hear, join us every week. Subscribe, follow, hit that notification button, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.